Let me be a bit more specific. So Ross was referring to a cataclysm as one of the reasons for why the aliens, I don't know if they should be called aliens, but those from the future may come back into the past. I, I don't know. I, I really like Ross. I, 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 I think he is a deep thinker. Um, I really enjoy talking to him actually even about these subjects and, and throwing conjecture against the wall. But I find myself um, having a really hard time saying, what are we, I mean, not to, not to play games, but what are we talking about here? Because if we're talking about climatology or, or if we're talking about, um, as we said, sedimentary record and other things like that of what has happened before, we're, we're throwing in aliens that we can't prove. We're throwing in a historical record that's spotty. I agree that some of these things, when placed on the table together, make a certain amount of sense. But I can't say that the things we're placing on the table make sense by themselves. And so there's a great deal of conflation going on. And I don't want to say that anyone's using their imagination too much. But I, I, I think that it would just be my opinion about a lot of fiction and conjecture that I've taken in over the years, which doesn't really apply um, in any way, shape or form to the work I'm doing right now. So it's it's imaginative and I, I think it's interesting. But um Again, I can't, I couldn't get there as an investigator um, because I'm, I'm making, I'm to an extent, making up one of the, um, one of the suspects and I'm, I'm assuming a story of one of the complainants to arrive to say that a crime has occurred. It's the fruits of the poisonous tree. So it's, it's, um, if we had like a show about conjecture and we wanted to really dig into that, you know, we can get some, get Graham Hancock or another expert, maybe from one of the ancient, uh, ancient architect channels or something like that. I think we could have a really interesting conversation, but it, it just, um, it doesn't apply other than to my opinion. Sure. I, I'll go also, I'll add, you know, my concern is right now, let's just say hypothetically, we as a species right now, we have the ability to go back in time. My concern is the whole paradox issue, right? You know, there's a saying, if I go back and I kill my grandfather, well, then I don't exist. And so therefore I couldn't go back in time to kill my grandfather. So there, there's a paradox issue here. And if there is a species that that is for some reason or us, let's say, coming back from a future, and I don't want to say the future because we don't know if there is, you know, the or perhaps a or multiple. Um, the bottom line is that if you if you come back and interfere with the past, you may very well inadvertently affect your ability to exist in the future and change things irre irrevocably. And in fact, you may change things for the worse, not the better. So, you know, I, I, I think it's certainly interesting to speculate, but, you know, I, I, I think that's why. It's it's tough for us to to conceive about going backwards in time. I think we can slow. I mean, nothing relativity. Time can be slowed down, and it can be potentially even stopped to some degree. But uh, uh, but to go backwards is a little bit different. You know, you're asking the river to run backwards, and you, you can slow it, you can dam it up. But to have a river go backwards, it's it, it's a little more more tough than that. And so therein lies the conundrum. Um, you know, if, if you go, the mere fact that you go back in time, you know, let's say hypothetically to your time period, which is what would matter if you went back in time, you wouldn't want to go back to some other, you know, other parallel universe's time because you're not going to affect your, your own, your, your own, your own paradigm. So, you know, you have to take, take it with a grain of salt. And I'm not sure that, um, I'm not sure we would want to do that because of the risk you, you would have to, to, and then you have the question about matter in the universe, right? So if I take matter from the future and the universe has only X amount of matter, X amount of energy and matter can't, and energy can't be created, destroyed. Now I add more matter. How, how does that affect the rest as a perturb the, the existing model of the universe by the mere fact you're introducing more matter into a universe that only has X matter? You know, and how does that occur? And now does that initiate another potential big bang? You know, these are the questions you have to ask yourself. It's seriously, whenever you, you're, you're, you know, providing a, a theory about time travel. Um, again, it's why, like, like Sean said, it's fun to speculate, but there's a lot more considerations that one has to consider if, if that was really possible and would you really want to do it? Quick editor's quiddity here. For those interested in the details, a positive cosmological constant allows for the creation of energy, and energy seems to only locally be conserved, not globally. I think the, uh, the we can all take the scene from um, one of the Avengers movies. I think it was Endgame, where they you know they ran through all of the all the different time travel movies, 
And they were trying to explain, you know, they're all, they're all wrong. You know, they're, they're getting it wrong. And they started talking about real physics and, and the possibility of alternate realities and alternate dimensions and things like that. But we have to ask ourselves again, if we don't have any personal perception of that, if we can't detect it, um, again, assigning motive is very, um, very much just opinion, opinion weaving, you know, um, I don't even know if I have a time machine or if there's an alien, what his motive is, what he wants and, and ag agreed with Lou again, what are even the mechanics of operating something like, I don't know, you know, it's, it's far beyond my ken. And just so you know, Lou, you mentioned at one point that the present is thick for lack of a better word, cigarette burning as the analogy. And for people who are interested in a more mathematical treatment of that, I spoke to someone named Nicholas Jisson, who gave a formalism to indicate that the present time is thick, that you can't pick out a particular point, that as soon as you do, it's almost like honey. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description. Yeah, no, and we see that very practically in, in, in the world of, of, of quantum physics and even the, the, the expression or the description of an electron. You know, again, we... For for your audience, who's probably my age, remembers in high school, you learned that an electron orbits uh, the, the nucleus of an atom. But in reality, that's not what's occurring. We now realize it's it's called an electron cloud for a reason, because of predictability and the fact that the electron can never be isolated in a in a fixed position. Um, you you can't do it. And in fact, is some scientists now are, are speculating that it, it is because the electron. Um, is 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 everywhere and nowhere at the same time. It is it is so small that it may literally be zipping in and out and through the very fabric of space time, uh, and so it's nonsensical to 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 try to predict the position of an electron because there is no position. It it's everywhere and nowhere at the same time around the nucleus of an atom, and um, you know that's 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 some of the, the the observations we're beginning to see now. And let let me add to that that the past and the future are human semantic constructs. It is always now. It always has been now from the universe's perspective. Um, the past is not something that's sitting next door to us. Um, it's it, so, and another way that people think of things when we think, when we say that the stars are very far away, the light took a very long time to travel to us, we're seeing the past. Again, that's a metaphor. We're not seeing the past, we're seeing now. And now is those photons are here hitting your eyes where at one point they were not. And so these, these are arbitrary concepts a lot of times. So we've applied a linear understanding to, to something that exists on a, on a much deeper, much deeper spectrum in a lot of ways. When we talk about going past, going future. And I think a lot of what Lou's talking about is that reality is anchored in now and in the present and in the, the entropic state that we exist in at this moment. And so there, there's so many variables to that and we've jumped, we're jumping to motive. You know, I, I think that's, that's something we just have to keep in mind. Yeah. I'll go even a step further, Kurt too, with a kind of piggybacking off of what, what Sean said, you know, the whole notion of, of here and now is, is almost nonsensical. Um, it's, it's, let me give an example. I ask you, Kurt, where, where are you? Where are you right now? Let's do a little quick exercise uh, for you and your audience. Where are you right now, Kurt? Let's say Toronto, Canada. Okay, where's Toronto? Where, where, where's Toronto? I don't know how to answer that. Okay, well, where, where's 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 Canada? Where's North? I America? think where's, I see where you're getting. Earth? Yeah, right. Right, and where's where's our solar system? Where's our Milky Way? There is no here here. Okay, we, we, we invent here because we have to live in an environment where we are used to boundaries and borders in order for us for things to make sense. But in reality, in the big scale of things, in the scale of the universe, the notion of here and now is really nonsensical because it depends on where I am relative to everything else. Here it's and now like only exists. Go ahead, Sean, sorry. It's like trying to pick out a specific electron from the electron cloud. It's... it's um... Yeah, it, it's, it's everything is moving so dynamically at all times that, that a, a, a location is, is not a concept. Even. It's, only a loca it's only a location in a, in a certain regional area. And you have to have some kind of substrate to measure that against. And we live in a universe that lacks a substrate. There's no grid, snap to grid that we can say we've, you know, we've, we're now 14 parsecs northeast to, you know, local globular cluster north what is the, what's that mean you know how would you navigate to that 
Um, that that's something that, that really that really digs into my head. How would we navigate to a point in the past? You have to figure out its location in space time. We haven't found space time yet to be a thing to measure in that way. And so, in fact, you know, if you look at in the, in the the theory of 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 inflation of the universe during the Big Bang, early parts of the Big Bang, and even now as the expansion of the universe continues to get bigger and faster, you know, scientists are now now stating that space itself is space time itself is is being created, and that's how you have this this expansion of the universe occurring faster and faster and faster. Uh, and that's you know when you when you when you look at that case in point, let me let me see if I can if I can bring this to, to a little bit easier to understand. Um, the the universe has been estimated to be almost not quite fourteen billion years old, right? And yet, when you ask the scientists how big is our visible universe from end to end, they say it's about ninety four billion light years across. Well, how can that be? Because that means the universe has to be expanding big faster than the speed of light. Well, not necessarily. What's happening? In, in theory, is that actual space-time itself is expanding as well. Um, think of uh, probably the best way to explain it would be, imagine um, water seeping up from the bottom of the bathtub and filling up the bathtub. Um, it's filling up from all sorts of little pores. Water's coming out everywhere, not just out of the spigot, but everywhere. It's starting to fill up the tub. Um, if that is the case, then then again, the notion back to where we are in the universe is always changing. In fact, when, when you say to yourself, and it's a little bit scary to do, but you say, I'll be here tomorrow. No, you won't. You will never be here again. And you, you, you can't, it's impossible because the, the, the entire universe isn't static. It's moving. And the only way to know where you are is only relative to other people and where they are. And by the way, they're just as lost as we are. So, and I don't mean that just figuratively. I mean that physically, you know, we, we are all, Kind of, kind of scattered through the winds together, and the only way we can kind of relate to each other is, oh, you're 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 kind of close to me, so I guess relative, you know, you're you're six foot and I'm five foot, you know, nine, and 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 we gauge things relative to each other, but we really have no idea where we really are or even when we are, and that's you know something to to ponder perhaps. We invented time so we know when to meet for lunch tomorrow, but in reality, we just observe entropy. 